Have you ever wanted to like something so bad, you finally get your hands on it, and then find out that it just isn't for you? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And welcome back to another episode of Grail or Garbage. By the way, if you answered yes to that question, tap the like button because you, my friend, are in good company. Today, we are going to rank the Best Tech Skirmish, a knife that I reached out to Best Tech for and they so generously were willing to loan me one so that I could check it out and give you the skinny, let you know just how good it is. You see, Grail or Garbage isn't just where I say, yeah, this is good or that's bad. No, we go into the details. I'm going to give you the skinny category by category. Is it good? Is it bad? Why? Why not? And we're going to assign it a score. And at the end, we will place it on our leaderboard so that you have the context you need to decide if a knife like this, or if this knife specifically deserves a spot in your EDC rotation. And if you think that because it's a best tech knife and they were willing to send it to me without me having to buy it, that you already know that I'm going to give it a good score, you might want to stick around till the end. Guys, I've had this knife in my possession for the last few weeks. I've had the opportunity to check it out, to carry it, to handle it, to answer the important questions. And now that I have, the only question left to answer is, is the best tech skirmish a grail or is it garbage? All right, it's time to go ahead and rank the Best Tech Skirmish. This is a knife that I requested with my contact at Best Tech. Um, his name is Eric. He runs Outer Limitless Channel. Make sure you check that out. Really, really great guy, really great channel. And they've helped me out quite a bit. So shout out to Outer Limitless for being a complete awesome person and allowing me to check out a lot of knives that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do otherwise. With all that being said, if you've never watched Grail or Garbage before, here's how it works. We've got five categories. The categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then of course, fit and finish. Each category is worth 10 points. After we rank each category, we will go ahead and place it on our public leaderboard by adding up all those points. Here's what that leaderboard looks like. Feel free to pause. We're going to go ahead and move on. So. First category is materials. Now, materials is heavily weighed against the cost, and the cost of this knife is about $119, give or take, depending upon where you decide to shop for it at, if you decide to shop for it. And those materials, for $119, you get ironwood handle scales, G10 backspacer, shadow box steel liners, a stamped pocket clip, a single-sided captive pivot, and this beautiful 154 cm blade. Now I do need to mention that the materials do change. If you go down to the budget model, you'll end up getting D2 blade and G10 handle scales, but the blade shape will be the same. The design is the same if you go down to the budget model. So if you like this blade shape like I liked it, um, there you go, you can get it for a bit less. So. 154 cm is a very good mid-tier steel. For a lot of reviewers, they actually prefer it in a lot of scenarios because it's well-rounded when we're talking about things like corrosion resistance, edge retention, and overall toughness. It's good. And it's a very user-friendly steel. 154 cm, not to be confused with CPM 154, is really good. For a non-powder metallurgy steel, I can't really complain about it at all. I have it on some other knives that cost, you know, 50, 60, $70 more, and it's been a very good performing steel, easy to sharpen up, holds its edge for a decent amount of time. It's not going to be chippy. Um, ironwood handle skills. So wood handle skills are not typically my favorite, and I'm gonna try to get this focused in here. One of the things I do love about wood handle skills, however, is the fact that because it's wood grain and because wood is never consistent, even though this is a production knife, anytime you buy a knife with wood handle scales, it's going to be somewhat specific to you because each handle scale is milled out of a different piece of wood, which means that it's going to be different each and every time. That's great. The steel liners on here are well hidden. They are shadow boxed. 
it adds to a nice bit of thickness around the grip. I don't mind that at all. And I love the fact that even though the backspacer is made out of G10, it's there. When we're looking at a blade like this, you want to protect that from crap in your pockets. And it does a really good job of that. So the materials on the here are definitely good. They're not amazing. Remember, we weigh all the materials against how much it costs. And at 120 bucks, there are other knives out there with better materials, you know, like S35VN or S45VN. And if you're looking at certain spider codes, you could even get, you know, just better steel. Uh, with all that being said, I'm not disappointed in the materials at all. I think that this is great. And for those reasons, it's going to get a seven out of 10 for materials. Now the next category is ergonomics. Ergonomics is all about how it feels in the hand. How versatile is it? Can you choke up? Can you not choke up? Can you switch your grip and have it be comfortable? Well, I mean, yes and no. So hear me out. There are suggestions for where you should put your fingers. Now, if you follow these suggestions, you'll notice that your hand is going to overlap the back end of the blade, and that doesn't necessarily feel very good. Instead, the natural grip should be more choked up. And with this blade shape being what it is, it's really meant for more utility type purposes. And if that's the case, however, I would have liked to see this jimping not only a bit deeper and more pronounced, but also farther down the spine of the blade because it is rather early. And if you're doing the regular grip and if you have smaller hands, that's totally fine. But for most people that have large to extra large size gloves, like most men do, uh, your natural grip is going to have you extend way past that jimping. And so if you're going to have jimping at all, which is a contested point, depending upon the knife you're talking about, but if you're going to put jimping at all, uh, don't just put it there as an afterthought. Actually think about where the thumb is going to be placed. Remember, this is an in-house design by Best Tech, which means that they didn't have Kombu necessarily design this knife. They didn't have, you know, O-Stop oh, oh, Hell uh, go ahead and design this knife. This was part of their in-house design. And I love this blade shape. Absolutely. However, uh, those few things are just kind of weird to me. Now, can you reverse grip this? Yeah, yeah, you can. And it's not terrible in that grip. However, uh, it, with this blade shape, it's not really meant for that, if I'm being quite honest. And the other thing that kind of disappoints me is that this is what I would consider to be a finger cutout, but it's a finger cutout for people with, you know, small hands. Uh, most of the time, most guys that I know have at least large to extra large size hands. And that finger cutout leaves a little bit to be desired. It's there, it's usable, but it's not super comfortable. Uh, the meat of my finger is slightly digging into the edge of the blade. And you know, if you keep your knives sharp like I do, that's just no good. So for all of those reasons, the ergonomics are going to get a seven out of 10. They're not absolutely atrocious and they're also not amazing. Um, it's better than okay. So a seven out of 10 seems fair. The next category, is fidget factor. Now fidget factor is my favorite category because I love fidgeting with my knives. Now it's been pointed out to me several times recently in the knife community that, you know, knives are more than just things that we use to fidget with them. And at the end of the day, I totally agree, but fidget is important because I want to be able to handle and hold on to my knife and really get to know it. And I do that through fidgeting. And I don't know about you, but it's important to me because the more I fidget with the knife, the better control I have over it, the more confident I feel when I actually do use it. And so yeah, fidget is important. How much do I want to play with this knife? Well, you know, it's not terrible by any stretch. You have this deployment hole here and you have this flipper tab. Those are the two things. You don't need a million options for it to be great. It just has to be something that's fun to play with and also comfortable to play with. And part of that has to do with the ergonomics. Now, the lock is not going to cause you a lot of discomfort when you're engaging and disengaging, and that's nice. Um, however, the detent on here feels a little bit lackluster. I mean, it's there, it's not super weak, but when I break it, it's also not like firing out with authority. And that's just one of those things where I'm like, okay, it's there, but I'm underwhelmed. I would have liked to have seen a stronger detent, especially at the $100 plus price point. So it is running off of bearings and the bearings are definitely noticeable. Um, could it use a little bit of lube from the factory? Maybe, I mean, I'm not necessarily entirely sure since I don't take, I haven't taken this knife apart. 
Uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired. Is it fun? Sure. Uh, is it going to get the job done? Absolutely. The deployment on it is, is confident. It's not going to be the most fun and it's not going to give you the best sounds. The sounds are definitely kind of muted. So it leaves a lot to be desired as far as fidgeting is concerned. It's, it's okay. It's good. It's not great. I mean, I, I shouldn't even say it's good. It, it's just okay. That is a little bit of a letdown on my, in my opinion, the fidget factor is going to get a six out of 10, which is just okay. Now on to the locking mechanism. Now, if you watched my intro all the way through, I've been hinting at this moment because not every knife they send me is going to be the most amazing thing ever, or even a high recommend. I try to be fair when I rank these knives because people actually do spend their hard earned money when I give a recommendation and I don't want anyone to buy something and then regret it later because I recommended it. So when you're flipping this out or flicking this out, there is no problem with the lock locking up. It locks out nicely. There's no blade play up and down left or right. There's no pivot lash. And as far as the centering is concerned, the centering is well, it's not perfect, but it's also not bad. I would say it's a little bit off to the right. Um, as far as the lockup is concerned, that's where we start to see the problem. Now, if you look at this closely, you'll see that this is about, what would that be? 10 to 15% lockup. You can see it better if you look at it from the back, actually. Uh, and it's not confidence inspiring at all. I'm not a huge fan of liner locks to begin with because they're not super sturdy. Um, but at the very least, it should lock out. And it does that if you deploy this with force and intent. It'll do that. See? No issue. Here's the problem. While I was carrying this, I decided to slow roll it out once just to show it to somebody. And when I did that, you'll notice. So here we are. Slow rolled it out. No lock up. Try it again. Here we are. No lockup. Just the detent. Now, again, if you flick this out, there's your lockup. If you flip this out, there's your lockup. Two handed open with some force, there's your lockup. Slow roll it out. When it clicks, it should be good. But look at this. It's not. That'll fold on you like a bad deck of cards at a poker game. So unless you are intentionally opening this hard, it's not going to lock out. Um, I reached out to my representative, my best tech USA representative, Eric, and I said, hey man, like I'm not sure if this is just a quality control issue or what's going on. Do you have another one of these? He has another one of these and he checked it out and he confirmed that his lockups only at about 10% as well. That's bad. That means that either there's an issue with their design schematics and this is not getting manufactured to spec or I don't, I don't even know, or it could mean that they're not QCing these correctly. I want to assume based on my history with best tech that it's not a QC issue, that it's a design schematic issue because most people with these deployment options are going to use the flipper. And when you do that, yes, it'll lock out. It's not super confident though, and I wouldn't trust that with a spine whack or two. So think of it like this. Here we have another Best Tech liner lock. This is the Kombu Design Ornetta. When this locks up, it doesn't matter if you slow roll it out. It doesn't matter if you open it with two hands. The moment it hits the back, it pops and it's secure. That is not a mistake, okay? It shouldn't matter if I open this with two hands or open it with a slow roll. That shouldn't make a difference. The moment that spine is parallel with the rest of the handle, it should be locked out. I shouldn't have to deploy this with force. And with this one, you kind of have to. And the problem is, is that if you can't trust that lock, it's not really a knife that you're probably going to feel comfortable carrying. I cannot in good faith give this a score because my audience deserves better and my leaderboard deserves better. I have to be faithful to my audience and my process. So as much as I like best tech, I am not able to give this a score for the lock 
given the inconsistency and when it is locked, it's not nearly enough to give me any kind of confidence in it. It's going to get a zero out of 10. And on that sad note, we're going to go ahead and round this off with the fit and finish. Fit and finish is all about how well designed is it? Is it executed well to its design language? Is there any extra edges that it shouldn't be there? So on and so forth. How well brought together is all the categories that I've mentioned? Well, when we talk about the materials, I was very satisfied with the ergonomics. You know, it's not terrible by any any stretch. The, the wood is a very comfortable feeling wood. I like the fact that the stamp pocket clip isn't causing me any issues at all. And I like the fact that they have the forethought to add this backspacer. It's really going to be hindered by its execution with the lock. And at the end of the day, I also really do like this blade shape. This blade shape is gorgeous. I would love to see this as a frame lock with say S35VN or 20CV and titanium handle scales, that would be money all day, but they'd have to fix that first. So the execution of everything is at least a bit better than average until we get to the lock and that's just not the greatest. The fidget factor is also a little bit wanting, but it could be fixed with better materials and better execution. So. For those reasons, the fit and finish, unfortunately, is going to be a 5 out of 10. Now, let's go ahead and add up all these scores. For materials, we got a 7. Ergonomics is a 7. Fidget factor is a 6. The lock is a 0. And fit and finish, mainly because of that lock, is a 5. And that's going to give it an overall score of 25, which is garbage. 25 or lower is garbage because... At the end of the day, if you don't have a lock on your knife that's supposed to lock, it's not something that you can entirely trust. And that's sad. Uh, I would trust a slip joint more than this knife at this point. Um, it's not to say that I've had this issue with Best Tech before, but whenever you're looking at mass produced knives, there's always that opportunity. Now, because I had this problem verified with a third party, I know that it's not just mine. And it makes me think that maybe they need to go back to their design schematics to fix that issue. So at the end of the day, I can't really, really give this a score better than that until they fix it. If they fix that, and if I hear that they fix that, then yeah, I'll update my score. I don't know how important that is to them, considering that this knife is already sold out on White Mountain Knives. It's $119, and I can't necessarily recommend it. If you already bought one of these, comment down below. Let me know if you've experienced the same issue that I have, and if you haven't, do you like it? Would you have scored it any differently? Guys, let me know. Talk to me in the comments section. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boo-hoo. I don't know why you're still here, but there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more content just like it, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.